Perfect. Welcome everyone to our series of uh, Bunky Clinic virtual visiting professors. Uh, I am Bob Axafa and with my partners, Drs. Greg Bunky, Rudy Buntik, Andrew Watt, and Walter Lin. I want to welcome you all to our series. And uh, tonight we um, have uh, uh, the honor of welcoming Professor Fu Chen Wei uh, from Changgung M Memorial Hospital, um, who is you know, one of the best known, if not the most best known uh, or well-known um, plastic surgeons and microsurgeons in, in the entire world. So it really needs no introduction, uh, but I will uh, certainly give it a shot. The first thing I want to say is when you have your own Wikipedia entry, you know uh, that, that you're a big deal. <laughs> and obviously, Professor Wei is, uh, is a big deal. But just to summarize, uh, many of the uh, of some of the things that that he has he has uh, performed and been able to accomplish, he currently heads um, the the world's busiest microsurgery unit, uh, which is obviously uh, at the Changgung Memorial Hospital. Uh, they've done over 30,000 or roughly around their microsurgical procedures, which is an incredible number. Um, he became he became chairman of the Department of Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery at Changgung back in 1994. Um, he became vice superintendent intendant of the hospital in 1997 and subsequently became the chancellor of the College of Medicine in 2003. Um, he is a past president of the World Society of Reconstructive Microsurgery. Um, he has published hundreds, over 500 peer-reviewed papers, over 110 book chapters, and I'm sure by now these numbers are even a lot greater than what I have. Um, 18 books, probably by now over 20. Uh, he's transplanted over 1,800 toes, which is an incredible number. Uh, over 1,600 fibula flaps and replanted over 30 over 3,000 parts. So incredible, incredible numbers. Um, he was the first surgeon in 2012 to be elected to the Ac Academia Sinica in Taiwan, and he also received a Global Healthcare Award in 2018. And in 2019, he was given the Presidential Science Prize. Uh, so clearly, not too many prizes or awards that Professor Wei has not received. I had the pl privilege of visiting. Professor Wei and, and my other colleagues, uh, such as Ming Wei Cheng, as you can see here at Changgung Memorial Hospital. And the hospitality was really inc incredible. Um, and Professor Wei and I were chatted for a while here in the lounge, and he um, uh, proceeded to actually, um, the, the, the funny story is he actually went ahead and, and washed a, <laughs> a coffee mug and made me my own cup of coffee, which was incredibly humbling for me to have P Professor Wei actually prepare a cup of coffee uh, for me. And then he even, went ahead and set me up with a, a nice massage in the massage chair in the physician's lounge. <laughs> so just part of the Taiwanese hospitality that we've all uh, bec become accustomed to. Um, I had the privilege of actually returning to Taiwan last year with my partner, as you can see, Dr. Ed Chen, uh, just to my immediate left, and uh, Dr. Walter Lin was with me here as well. Um, and this was an incredible trip of collaboration. Um, as you can see here, we are Dr. Chen and I are, are chatting with Dr. Uh, Fu Chen Wei about, about our trip and, and, and the plans for the trip. Uh, we had a couple of operations planned as well. Um, any, anyone who's been to Changgung knows that um, spending any time with, with Professor Wei involves a lot of learning. Um, and this uh, is before his head and neck cases. Um, there are group rounds where um, the case that is about to be performed is discussed in detail. There are all the history of the patients and possible surgical options before the case even begins. So every day is a teaching day, and I think that's one of the reasons why Changgung is, has always been at the top of everyone's list with regards to, to places to go to train. Um, now, paths co uh, cross very commonly, as I always say, and literally three days after this, I saw Professor Wei again in the US at the Duke Flap course, and I, of course, I had to go and hear him talk again, where he talked about how to cultivate new giants and how to mentor uh, uh, new trainees in, in microsurgery, and he has certainly trained hundreds, if not thousands, of microsurgeons around the world. Uh, so this was a privilege to, to get to spend some more time with him at Duke, as you can see here. So without further ado, Professor Wei, it's really an honor and a privilege to have you here um, to take uh, uh, time out of, um, out of uh, I'm sure, which uh, it's still a pretty busy day for you, um, uh, and joining us here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, stop my screen sharing, and I will uh, give you presenter control. Give me one second here. We're at 130 people. This is fantastic. Let, let me find you in the list so I can, uh, let's see here. There's so many users. There we go. Okay, so you should, uh, okay. 
So you should now be made presenter and you should be able to share your screen with us. Can you see the screen? Yes, we can see it, perfect. Okay, um, Bart, thank you so much for your kind introduction of myself and my department. We feel humbled. And uh, uh, I'd like to thank the Monkey Clinic uh, for having invited me to share my experience of post transplantation for the mutated hand uh, reconstruction. Now, actually, I have told uh, Greg and uh, Babak, actually, uh, my uh, heavy practice of total hand transfer were uh, on the, between the 1980 and the 1990. And after that, then I slowed down. I changed my career from uh, those trauma-related microsurgery to, you know, oncology resection reconstruction. So although it still remains, the total transplantation still remains as my favorite talk, but it may not be my first choice. But I really uh, like to share with, a, you know, you guys about, you know, total transplantation. Because to me, that in the past two, three decades, there are not much uh, change. Uh, from the very early phase of its development. Thank you so much. And uh, you know, I I really, really like to thank uh, uh, Harry Banki. Uh, without without him, I'm not able to uh, develop the you know microsurgical service at Changgen. Now I'm not able to talk to you. And then you guys, Baba, Greg, and and Andrew and Ludi and also water, you are not able to work in bucket clinic. So for this, we are very grateful to this gentleman who is the father of uh, microsurgery. In order to make a complete uh, presentation, I usually, if the time allow, I usually like to go all, over all of those items that I have missed. Yeah, okay, good. And that includes initial management because this is very important. And then go over the technical toll harvest and then talking about thumb reconstruction, that less controversial. But the finger reconstruction, reconstruction, even at this time, it's in my hand, it's very mature. But the most of the people still have a lot of you know controversial argue about, about you know the, the necessity of this kind of total finger reconstruction. And then I like to uh, take this opportunity, particularly to uh, share with you about my experience of metacarpal hand and the metacarpal like hand reconstruction with various kind of toe transplantation. Uh, because of the time limitation, I'm not going to talk about pitfall complication. I'm not going to cover the rehabilitation. In order to have a uh, good result of the total hand transfer. The initial care of the hand injury is very important. And you have to avoid excessive shortening of all the structure, including the skeleton, especially when it's close to the mobile MP joint, like the base of the proximal phalanx, even five millimeter, and base of the middle phalanx, even five millimeter. If the joint is contact, it's better that you preserve that joint. And then, of course, you do the same thing to the pulley, to the tendon, and the teaching of neuronovascular bander and management in the amputation um, uh, stump, the conventional hand surgery. Is, uh, and, and when we talk about the preparation of the patient for total brain transfer, this is very, very uh, different. And then, although there are many, many uh, local flags can be used for a coverage construction in the hand. But if the patient uh, is trained for the total hand transfer, I try to advise that not to use the local flap in the hand in order to avoid scarring and use of those uh, possible uh, recipient uh, surface, a recipient vessel. And here's the case that shown the preservation of the insertion of the flexor uh, Digital uh, uh, provenance here in the base of the middle phalanx. And then here, this is the uh, mobile, I mean, the intact flexor 
this non sublimus it should be preserved and all those pulley here are better preserved so that when you have a total grain transfer you can have a full excursion of the uh, pin dog. And as I mentioned, that although there are many uh, soft tissue, uh, you know, blood can be, uh, you know, uh, used from the hand and uh, for coverage reconstruction, but in the patient preparing for total hand transfer, you better use, you know, the distant blood, such as the groin blood. And, and this is very, very convenient. It should the soft tissue coverage before you are pregnant total hand transfer should be adequate or even redundant. Because with this kind of uh, plan, then you are able to protect the neurovascular band, which cover the other aspect of the toe. And you are able to create an adequate wave space in the hand. And of course, because of you know, adequate replacement in advance uh, before the total hand transfer. So when you have the toe, you can minimize the skin inclusion. And this can minimize the donor side uh, mobility. And of course, this is allow you to optimize through the revision, secondary revision, the appearance of the junction, at the junction between the transferred toe and the recipient side. Here you can see those are the patients that they all prepare for receiving the toe transplantation surgery later. And about the timing of uh, transplantation, actually, uh, personally, I don't think this is that, uh, that critical, provided you can convert it, the wound, no matter it's a subacute or subchronic, you can convert it into a fresh wound. Then it's allow you to do uh, you know, uh, reconstruction. So either primary when the wound is open or secondary when the wound here is uh, if the patient is healthy, a motivated wound is uh, clean. And then I think there's no uh, contraindication for doing total wound transfer at any stage. And here is an example of two primary total transplantation. See, this is the fresh wound. It's the accident happened uh, three days before the uh, timing for total wound transfer. And then you see here we prepare two total to reconstruct the thumb and also the middle finger. And here you see the result. And But this is after, you know, uh, once, one, once time, the central debug of the pop, and then also the lesion at the junction of the transplanted toe and uh, its uh, recipient site. Here is a small study that I published in the journal and comparing the survival rate and the respiration and other items between the primary and the secondary construction uh, group, and there's no statistic uh, difference. And when young uh, surgeons start to do the total to hand trans transfer, and to my observation, most of the time they are bothered by the anatomy. And but if you are able to know that every toe, unless they have previous injury. They must receive the blood supply from the branch of the uh, arterial tibia artery, pedis dorsalis artery. So, in my opinion, we just uh, not to be bothered by the classification of those uh, experts, including Gibert, uh, May, and the Leon of Hong Kong. The more you read, the more confused you are. You just simply forget this. And follow the way of so called retrograde dissection of vascular pedicle or total end transfer. The conventional way usually start from proxima and then dissect toward the distal. But in my uh, technique, I like to explore the first web space here. And uh, here I can see the junction of the uh, digital artery, the uh, two, the great toe, and digital artery to the second toe. And then this junction, if it's located above the deep intermediate carpal ligament, basically this is so called dorsal dorsal system. The dissection is easier because it's above the deep intermediate carpal ligament. But in case it's located beneath 
the uh, deep in the metacarpal ligament, you need to dissect out with more dissection. But uh, if you feel that too much dissection will uh, jeopardize the um, function of the foot, increase the mortality, the mobility of the uh, donor site, then you can divide it, the plantar uh, dominant artery at any site and then bridge the gap with the bank graft. So this is my uh, approach. With this kind of retrograde dissection, then even you don't know the anatomy, it's okay. It's okay because it's very much like the perforator uh, frog cancer. You identify the distal, uh, the, I mean, the uh, where it's entry uh, through the fascia and enter the skin, the skin. And, and then from there, you retrograde dissect them. This allows early identification of the dominant pedicle. Of course, you are not confused by anatomy and no need for angiogram. And you can optimize your vascular pedicle without wasting too much time and, and, and making long pedicle and then end up that you have to, you know, uh, trim some of the uh, density pedicle. Now I'd like to um, share with you my concept and my practice about the sub reconstruction. I think this is a very well established uh, concept and technique, and of course, contributed by, by Harry Ban. Yesterday I was worried about, yesterday I was worried about the color of this, but now it's not very good. Please, uh, please turn your microphones off, everyone. <laughs> Uh, please turn your microphone off. I'm going to try to find who this person is. Thank you. Yes. Sorry, Dr. Wave. Go ahead. Can I continue? Yes. Sorry about that. Yes. So, uh, for the summary construction, Ooh, it's dumb. The, Ooh. the toe can be, can be from the great toe or can be from the lesser toe. And from the great toe, it can be the total gray toe that the first had uh, developed by Harry Banke and the rubber run flat that 1979 by Wayne Morrison and trim gray toe uh, that is by me and three store by by Give Share. And uh, no matter which toe are used for reconstruction, the ideal thumb reconstruction should fulfill three uh, uh, goals. One is that the functional uh, goal should be okay and the aesthetic goal should be uh, achieved. And of course, minimal donor site mobility is a necessity. And at this time, my practice, uh, like the selection of the patient for different technique. Uh, here, when I use the great toe uh, transfer, I usually like to select the patient uh, who have thumb amputation at the MP joint. This means, that if I can include the total gray toe, then the interphalangeal joint of the transferred gray toe is useful to increase the dexterity of the transplanted toe. And sometimes when the patient has severe associated injury, they, they're really not concerned about the appearance, which means that most of the gray toe, total gray toe, they are much bigger than the uh, normal opposite, if they are still some opposite thumb you know, a normal person some there. Like in this patient who sustained electric uh, injury and then have, you know, high arm amputation on the right side and the left side, you can see uh, the toe, uh, the multiple finger amputation. And the, when the patient was referred to me, the, the second, uh, I mean, the workspace severe, showing severe contracture. So in this patient, I feel that the function is uh, more important. Uh, even the transparent total break so looks much bigger. And so in this patient, I decided to use total break toe for reconstruction. And then the second ray amputation was performed to increase the uh, wave space. And then I have additional second toe from the other uh, foot for reconstruction of the middle finger. And here you can see the result. And for the great toe river run, I consider this is the one developed by Wayne Morrison in 1979. Although it's uh, really able to produce very nice thumb replica, 
but because use of the non vascular bone, it may uh, have a fracture or may have a reabsorption and that changes the shape. So I modify the greater referral both in its selection indication and then technique. Usually I like to uh, apply this technique to the cases like this, that some skin about, about uh, together with the nail uh, loss, and but the skeleton and the tendon are intact. In those cases, you can apply the original uh, greater reverend technique. And but however, when you have this kind of case, distal amputation to the interphalangeal joint, then you are able to include the distal phalanx of the great toe, but you burn the plantar side of the great the harvest uh, reverend. And besides that, you reduce the uh, soft, I mean the skin envelope. So by doing this, you're able to get good results. So my indication for the modified uh, uh, great toe reparation is for some abortion and or some amputation distal interphalangeal joint. Trim great toe uh, transfer was developed uh, at Changden by myself. It's aiming to combine the merit of the total great toe and then the merit of a greater reparation run. It's particularly useful for the patient who is concerned about the appearance and who has a much uh, size discrepancy between the transplanted toe and the, the normal opposite thumb. So in this case, basically the um, uh, technique is similar to uh, the soft tissue uh, technique is similar to uh, what Wayne Morrison described. But you do longitudinal osteotomy uh, through the proxima and the distal uh, phalanx and including the interphalangeal joint. And then yet still maintain and then repair the joint. This allows you to maintain the joint function but have reduced, you know, about one third of the width of the joint and the distal branch. By doing this, you are able to make the transplanted rate of much smaller to make the size of the body. So this is the case, John Yu. And second top cancer still remain as a preferred uh, on the side for many Let advocate uh, the use for the children, but I'm not quite sure because uh, initially I followed the su their suggestion. I, in the children, I used the uh, second toe. Then I noticed the function, the appearance are suboptimal. Therefore, I start to use also the trim gray toe, trim gray toe, and then I found there's no uh, problem. Even I follow up them for uh, 20, 30 years. It's continued to grow, and the here, but uh, this is, you know, the second tone transfer for the sum reconstruction. It's very important that the length of the second transfer and the second tone cannot be uh, longer than that, you know, distal to the in, uh, proximal interphalangeal joint of the uh, index when it's in AD deduction position. Otherwise, it's make a very peculiar, you know, appearance of the transfer and the tone. But with this, this is a kind of my, my personal observation that when you compare the functional result from different type of the toe transplantation, basically they are not uh, different between total greater toe transfer, modifying greater toe run, or trim greater toe transfer. But definitely the, the second toe or other lesser toe is that is a little bit uh, you know, uh, idea, less idea than those uh, from the great talk. And for the cosmetic appearance, I think those are about the same. And those two are about the same and followed by total great talk. Although it may shrink a little bit, but it's very difficult to, uh, you know, without further revision to match the size of the normal opposite thumb if they are much bigger you know, in, in the foot, it, it's, it's uh, have slight 
uh, shrinkage smaller, but it won't reach that without a revision. And the second uh, toll again is the last. With this, then I complete my um, thought and of uh, great toll transfer to you. Now I'd like to move to the next, that is the finger reconstruction. This is a more controversial. I still remember in 1996, at that time, there still, uh, there was no uh, banky lecture, but the uh, uh, most prestigious, prestigious uh, lecture in the SRM is a defunct lecture. And I was asked to present total finger reconstruction. And I thought that I might be able to convince the people this is a good you know, uh, option for finger reconstruction. But it seems to me it's uh, so far haven't become popular yet. But if you look at the conventional way of the construction of the, the finger reconstruction, I think that most of those options is uh, either past impossible or difficult to achieve the goal. And usually require prolonged disability time and uh, require multiple procedures. And yet the uh, reconstruction results still far from adequate. I feel like tissue from the foot is just ideal for finger reconstruction. Any part, including the glabral skin or part. Here, I usually like to use a glabral skin because I prefer to use the you know lateral side, you know the, the lateral side of the great toe. It's not the frontal side of the great toe to avoid donor side of it. I will show you a case you know later on, and then depend on the recipient side requirement. You can design your uh, toe, that's a toe user, uh, including part of them, the so-called partial laser toe, or following the same concept of the uh, referent flap if they are only involved the nail and the soft tissue of part. And of course, vascular joint and nail is a part of this whole transplantation. And uh, then I found that combined second and third toe or combined third and fourth toe is a very useful armamentarium for the construction of two adjacent uh, fingers, missing at certain fingers at the same time. I will explain to you how I do it later. Here is a case that present to me with the uh, pop index pop defect and already uh, reconstructed by someone and referred to me. But here you can see the swiveling unstable, unstable because this is the hairy skin. It's not the rubber skin. So in this case, I use the lateral part of skin from the brain top here. And of course, at the same breath, uh, I mean the same vascular pedicle of the total brain top transfer. And then here is the result. And here you can see here, the functional result. And the donor side, if it's less than 0 0.7, usually you are able to get primary closure. But in case you are not able to get primary closure, you can uh, harvest the uh, frontal uh, skin from the in instep area. And then here, you see this is the case that we can start with this. It's very nice. And the patient uh, was not bothered by the skin graft donor site. And here is a, a patient uh, who uh, was a pan uh, pianist, but unfortunately because of the burn, there's a star contracture here. She was not able to continue to do that. See the contracture of the web space. And then in this patient, I release the web space between all those fingers. And then I use two uh, web space. The skin is also a kind of gravel skin. So I harvest this and then the other side the same. And then, but in the other side, I divide it into two because I don't need the web space. So with this kind of uh, two microsurgical procedure, I uh, was able to provide, you know, the glabrous skin to the uh, important uh, web space area. And here you can see the result. And the donor sign, 
very acceptable. The modified uh, second order paradigm is just idea for this kind of case. You often see the patient have distal amputation and that involves only the nail and the pop. So if that is the case, you can uh, harvest the second toe. You can include the distal phalanx, and then at this time, you drill a hole into the harvest distal phalanx, and then sharpen, sharpen the uh, amputation stump here. And, and then you can simply dive into, dive into uh, the recipient vessel without a further fixation. And there's also no need for tendon repair. So this kind of procedure is very uh, attractive to, to the patient. And very soon, this is three months, the patient is able to use the reconstructed uh, index fingers uh, for the botany. Here is a example of partial toe. We include the distal phalanx and part of the mid phalanx. And then with this, then you are able to reconstruct this missing picture here. And the patient have good results. And vascular joint is about, you know, the technique is about the same. And uh, here showing the case that's showing, you know, quite nice uh, reconstruction. But when I was active, uh, still active in trauma reconstructive medical surgery, I have done, I think, only about something about 15, maybe about 15 cases. And uh, this is one of the good results, the uh, range of motion, one of the good results. And at that time, I was thinking how to improve, to make it always constantly, you know, good uh, recovery. But unfortunately, because I see that my uh, interest and my uh, practice to oncology reconstruction, so I could not continue. And this later on was, uh, you know, uh, followed by, by Yodelin. And Yodelin uh, did a very nice study on tendon, you know, in the toe and their insertion and their the central sleep and the, the um, other relationship. So this is a diagram showing that now he repaired the always repair the flexor, uh, I mean the flexor, sorry, extensor tendon first, and then followed by repair of the flexor tendon. And then the lumbricum muscle of the second toe uh, should be preserved when you harvest. And this will hook to a slip of flexor digital profundus to provide extension of the uh, PIP joint and PIP joint. And through his modification and his work, now I like to say the joint transfer have a constant good result in our department. And now I'd like to uh, share with you about the combined second third toe or third and fourth toe. Although this technique was uh, early uh, described by, by Tsu Min Tsai and also by, uh, by um, someone from Germany, but um, in spite of the, um, you know, the good, in my, in my hand, a good result, it seems to me it's never become popular. Probably because people they don't understand you know, how to do it. And the, it's a, um, it means that you depend on the same uh, vascular pedicle. In the first dorsal metatarsal artery and the branch, and then between that is to the second toe, and the third toe come from either the um, communication branch in the west stress area between the second and third toe, or come from the common digital artery uh, between the second and third toe, and it's a very useful, you know, when you want to reconstruct two adjacent missing finger especially when the amputation level is proximal to the web space, because you can include the web space, web space between the second and third toe uh, to reconstruct the web space between, you know, two adjacent fin fingers. But it's very important for the cascade consideration. The remaining fingers, the lens of the remaining fingers, cannot be longer than the little finger. 
Otherwise, you will create a very peculiar uh, cascade. Ozone function may still acceptable, but appearance are uh, usually not, not so, so, so good. And when you have, you have two situations like this. In this kind of case, the habitation occur distal to the wave, wave space. And the little finger lens is maintained. Uh, is maintained. There's no other remaining finger, in this case, uh, the ring finger, longer than this. So this is very suitable for combined certain territory. But when you encounter such kind of situation, you have amputation occur distal to the web space. It's uh, not applicable uh, with the combined certain territory. And instead, you should use two single laser top transfer. This means this is a two microsurgical procedure, and this is one microsurgical procedure. In order to avoid donor side mobility, it's very important that you have limited skin inclusion. Here is the midpoint of the first web space, and here is the midpoint of the third web space. And then you have to limit your skin inclusion not beyond the midpoint. And then you are always able to get primary closure of the donor side. And of course, you have to remove those so-called fibro fatty tissue from the plantar side, which will allow you to have a better flexion on the MP joint and also avoid the uh, very bulky anterior posterior, you know, uh, dimension that kind of appearance. And then, in regard of where you do uh, amputation, either disarticulation at the metatarsal uh, pharyngeal joint or transmetatarsal amputation. At present time, I do not provide a bony reconstruction to restore the lens. So I feel that the total side of mobility with this uh, is really minimal. I will show you, uh, you know, some of the results, and later on I will show you the data. Then you will be convinced that if you follow those simple principle, the total side mobility is very acceptable. Here you can see, you know, these are from fifth amputation uh, of the uh, the top, combined second and third toe. And uh, we have carried out uh, the GET analysis, and uh, there are some uh, change of the uh, weather buried area. But however, uh, the patient, most of the patients, do not complain significant tone style morbidity. I even uh, feel that the complaint of other combined second and third toe transfer is less than the complaint of the total gray toe. Even you do a, a amputation uh, very distal and the proxima distal to the proxima uh, one centimeter of the gray toe, and still the patient has more concern of that then the donor side after this. With this uh, amamentarian in your hand, then you are able to you know, reconstruct the metacarpal hand, which I think is the most severe form of an injury, but still can be reconstructed microsurgically. The hand which has suffered from multiple amputation, multiple of the digits, and therefore, the prehensile, prehensile function is lost. What is the prehensile function? Prehensile function means that when the thumb doing the circumduction, it can reach any one of the uh, four fingers. And, and this is the prehensile function, the basic hand function. This obviously requires two opposable components, the thumb component and the finger component with adequate length and adequate motion. And of course, stable and pain-free contact surface with protect, protective sensation is even uh, better. And the metacarpal hand uh, can be classified into type one and type two. 
Type 1 means that the thumb is intact or largely intact. And then the type 2 means it's not only the finger amputation, but also involve the thumb. They both, you know, proximal to the functional level. And what is the metacarpal line? This is the term that I coined uh, several years ago. That in this kind of case, although by definition, this doesn't belong to type 1, but it can be reconstructed in the same manner uh, with uh, to that of the type 1. And this is not by definition, not the type 2, but when you want to uh, reconstruct it, you follow the same principle of the type 2 metacarpal and reconstruction. Here is an example of type 1 metacarpal hand, and uh, initially I provide coverage here so that I can minimize the inclusion of the skin flap from the foot. And then here showing the harvest of the combined second fertile. In this case, I depend on first dorsal metatarsal artery, but I still preserve the common digital artery between the second fertile as a light bolt. So in case after first anastomosis complete and the perfusion to the third toe is not adequate, then I will do second vascular anastomosis. And by doing this, you can see the patient has very, very good, you know, uh, functional recovery. And there's no extension back in this case, because at that time I have repaired the lumbrical uh, to the flexor uh, slip of the flexor hutches. So patient able to straight uh, without lack of extension. And here you see uh, a good functional result. And this is the metacarpal light, the same approach. And the patient is so happy with the initial command um, second third toe. And he asked me to do the other one. So here, although the cascade is not that great, but it's acceptable because the only remaining uh, finger is the little fingers. So it's about the same, about the same. But the patient is happy with this. Even the casket is not that great because he needs the hand uh, for his work, including here you can see it's uh, help the uh, grasp and also the precise uh, pitch. And then come to the type two metacarpal hand. I'd like to take you through this so that you can understand the value of using the combined second and third toe for the metacarpal hand. Type two refers to those that they don't have, you know, uh, adequate length of the thumb and the, all the fingers, but it can be further divided into A, B, C, and D. A means that the thumb, A, B, C, D, basically based on the thumb and the thinner muscle, the length of the amputation location of the amputation and the presence of the residual sinus muscle and also the condition of the basal joint. So when it's A and a B, this means that it's either distal or proximal to the metacarpal head, but basically the thinner muscle function still largely preserved. In this kind of case, you, you are able to do thumb and the finger reconstruction with multiple toe at the same time. But when it's uh, between, it's become C and the D, especially C, the C means that although the thinner muscle, if the thinner muscle is very inadequate, although the best heart is still intact. In those cases, 2C and 2D, and if you need multiple toe transfer, then I like to do stage reconstruction with the finger reconstruction then before the thumb reconstruction. And this is my recommendation uh, for the stage. As I mentioned, 2A and 2B, the one stage, you know, reconstruction of some component and finger uh, component. And this is my preferred choice for the thumb reconstruction. And 2C and the 2D, I like to stage their reconstruction with the finger reconstruction done before the thumb reconstruction. And in 2C, I like to have a either the primary or secondary procedure, tendon transfer to restore, improve the position, the some uh, circumflexion. 
that in this vision is a metacarpal uh, light hand too. So you see here, I reconstruct the thumb and the fingers and the patient uses the hand very successfully. And here is a metacarpal uh, hand type 2B. And in this case, the thinner muscle, the thinner muscle still adequate. So I decide to reconstruct the thumb, the thumb and the finger at the same time. So here I use combined second and third toe for the middle and ring finger. And then I use a trim gray toe for the thumb. And here you can see the result. This is done, you know, simultaneously. And then come to C and to D, that is uh, the, um, I mean, need means that significant loss of thinner muscle or destruction of the basal joint. So at this stage, then I, in this uh, case, I like to do finger reconstruction prior to some reconstruction. And before I do some reconstruction, I like to have uh, some processes so that the patient can understand what the functional result he will get at this after second stage of thumb reconstruction. And this also very uh, process is also very helpful for the surgeon to do intraoperative planning. Then here, the sum processes is for rehabilitation for the patient. And then this uh, also allow surgeon to decide the thumb lens, proper thumb lens, and the proper thumb position. Because uh, either the best action is gone, there's no way the patient can do opposition or inadequate, you know, thinner muscle, the patient cannot do that. So you better, you know, uh, have this, uh, you know, processes for, I say, a guide. Like in this patient, a made a couple uh, type 2D. I did a combined second third toe for the uh, middle and ring finger, and then have adequate thumb at a web space between the thumb and the, uh, the fingers. And then at this time, the processes was provided to the patient. So patient know that when the second stage gray toe transfer is done successfully, he's able to do this, he's able to do this. So we took this process to operative theater, and then we decide where we want to do our osteotomy and where we want to do our positioning, you know, toward uh, be able to be opposed by the already uh, transplanted uh, fingers here. So you see, even in the 2D or 2C, you're able to get this kind of result. Opposition, opposition is at the three-port pitch is very uh, useful for the hand function. But come to the bilateral metacarpal hand, the consideration uh, should include both hand and the, and the feet. Because in my opinion, you know, uh, I like to uh, have a, a, a good balance. And, and, and under this consideration, for the dominant hand, I like to provide three for pitch. But for the non dominant hand, I like to provide two uh, toe transfer only for part to part pitch. And this means a total of five toe were harvested from the feet. And then in this situation, I preserve, I like to, for the right foot, I like to preserve the gray toe from the right foot. And then I like to preserve the second toe uh, from. Uh, from the left foot. The reason is that the right foot is more useful for driving. So I need to uh, harvest second and third toe together. And for the right, for the left foot, I like to use the a gray toe for the sum reconstruction and third and fourth toe for the finger reconstruction. So this is my, uh, usually my, my, uh, Apprentice. Back in this fashion, a bilateral hand, um, age uh, of uh, six, suffered from bilateral hand amputation, and then initial treatment was done somewhere, and the wound healed by skin graft. And when the patient come to 
mind training, the patient was not to, able to do, to do anything, even to uh, uh, drink water because, uh, because of this severe uh, deformity. So uh, I uh, spent time carefully evaluate the reconstructability of those two hands. And I noticed the patient actually was able to do opposition, genome function here as moving at the time when I test. And then I give a vigorous you know, rehabilitation. And then after one month, you, you, I saw tremendous improvement of the thinal function. So I told the patient that your kid uh, hand uh, are reconstructable. So in the first stage, I replaced this inadequate coverage with pedicle growing graft. And then in the second stage, I, then I performed you know, finger reconstruction to the middle and ring, my second and third toe to the middle and ring finger and widen the first, first web space and trim greater for the thumb. And by doing this, I was able to get this kind of this on the right dominant hand. And this gave dependence confidence to ask me to do the other hand. So following the same uh, sequencing, then I repressed this skin with another growing graft, pedicle growing graft. And then afterwards, I provide two total transfer, one to the uh, great, the thumb, the other to the fingers. Here you can see. And then this is the result about, I think about three, four years later, about three, four years later. And this is about like this six, seven yeah, years later. The patient uh, was able to use the hand successfully. And I have followed this patient uh, now at 30 years, 30 years, and the patient is still doing very well. And here you see the patient when he was 11 years old, he was able to use, you know, the reconstruction hand for the bowling. And when he graduated from high school before entering the college, he drew this for me. And this is the recent follow-up. You can see the hand. So both monocyte and morbidity are really uh, negligible. And here is another patient that came back from Thailand, very similar. So I follow the same way of reconstructing this and the patient then get married and continue to work. And the here shown that he used the hand for various uh, you know, uh, function. And here is the patient have more proximal, I mean a couple hand type 2D. And initially I reconstruct this Soft tissue and bone with a pedicle growing drug, including EDF bone. And then to increase the, the lens, the lens. And then afterwards, I uh, perform part of the same order a combined second third toe for the, for the middle and ring finger. And then here is the processes. And then following the position of these processes, then I transfer to. Oh, here and you see, in spite of um, this kind of effort, the patient cannot do triple pinch. Although the patient is able to do this, and the here some other function, some other function, but not able to do triple pinch. So to me, this is this kind of reconstruction is suboptimal. So it's probably uh, you know the case for the auto transplantation. And, and more like this kind of case, definitely, I don't think that the total transfer um, can provide acceptable, you know, uh, result, uh, either function or cosmetic. And inspired by those uh, cases, that the, actually the first time uh, was by the case in, in Louisville by uh, Warren Brandenburg, this good friend of mine. And, and but that time I started to prepare, you know, uh, our department for this. And furthermore, you know, in, in after several years, 
the even more inspired inspiring case stand by by Andrew Lee and by Star Lemon. And you can see those definitely the allo transplantation hand uh, provide the function that our conventional microsurgical toe transplantation not able to uh, achieve. However, there are some obstacle of this kind of vascular uh, composite allo transplantation hand, either because of a multiple rejection can happen or chronic rejection can happen. And uh, even there's no uh, rejection, but under prolonged uh, use of immunosuppression, it may have those problems that are well known to us. And in order to overcome those and prepare us for us, we established our VCA lab since the year of 2000. So it's been 20 years. And our study, uh, you know, uh, basically, we try to create many animal uh, models, including rats, mice, and swan. These are for partial face transplantation or total face transplantation or high limb transplantation. And then we test a different kind of cell, the so-called cell therapeutics, to uh, study the immunomodulation. And also we become interested in a vascular uh, bone, bone marrow uh, transplantation. And those cases, if they have rejection, then we like to know the molecular mechanism and their cell and the cytokine uh, profile. But in the survival, the successful uh, cases, we not only like to know the molecular mechanism and the cytokine profile, we also like to know the functional recovery. And we have used many uh, uh, ways to to uh, know the molecular image to trace the cell that we use uh, for study, where they go, and the functional recovery, including functional MRI and, and the many uh, fine instruments to test uh, the brain and the movement of the, uh, the uh, uh, mystachian patch of the animal. And then we also uh, do mock surgery uh, from time to time. And finally, in 2014, our team performed the very first hand transplantation in Taiwan. And from 2014 to now, we have a total of five patients, and, and four of them received single hand transplantation, but one patient received bilateral. These are the work done by foreign, foreign yeah, uh, uh, Bo Yaren and then in Chen Hong, uh, those two uh, brilliant young surgeons. They uh, continue the good work that we have been doing. Those that I have uh, shared with you are basically based on the number of those uh, four transplantations. Up to the last December, we have performed a total of 2,200 cases of whole transplantation from 2,000 patients. And please note, this is a great toll transfer. We have a more than 250 great toll transfer. And all of the great toll transfer we perform, you know, the amputation limited at the proxima, at the base of the proxima phalanx because we don't want to see uh, the functional deficit of the, uh, of the greater after it harvest. So the base of the proximal phalanx is uh, the push off area. We like to preserve that. And uh, also this can help to reduce, I mean, to eliminate concern of so forth, reduce the span of the foot. So, and then here, Please note, there are more than 200 cases of combined second and third of. This means that we are very confident that after harvest of combined second and third of, the donor side mobility is not that significant. So we dare to continue uh, this kind of uh, surgery. 
I'd like to make a conclusion regarding to the toe, uh, two hand transfer for immediate hand injury. Toe, two hand transfer is reliable and effective for most of thumb and finger reconstruction. It's also very useful for metacarpal hand or metacarpal like hand, especially type 1 and type A, B, and C. But however, for type 2D, or more proximal, the so-called couple hand, the functional result remain uh, in my in my practice remain unsatisfactory, and therefore I consider hand allo transplantation might be a better solution. And then uh, finally, I like to conclude: in order to achieve the optimal functional and accepted result of the toe transplant. We have to pay attention from the very beginning. Initial treatment is, is very important. And preoperative planning, including the selection of the technique, are all very uh, crucial. And of course, during the surgery, we have to pay attention to all the detail. And then the revision surgery <coughs> can really help to improve you know, the functional and asset result. And of course, uh, post-operative uh, rehabilitation is an important part of the uh, functional, a good functional result. Then with this, I'd like to uh, conclude my presentation. I'd like to thank um, Greg and uh, Rudy and uh, Babak and Andrew and then also water and all the other colleagues from a different uh, part of the world. And here, this is what I um, like to, to share with you. Actually, my microsurgical career, I returned uh, from my training in uh, Canada, in America, in 1981. And at that time, until 2000, until 1989, my practice mainly uh, trauma related here. And there are very, very few from um, coronals or other uh, etiology, the microsurgical reconstruction. But after 1989, uh, the Chang'an uh, established a, micro, a, a trauma team. So at that time, uh, we decide, myself, Hong Ji Chen, and David, we decide not to stay in the trauma team. So as a result of that, our practice, or or our three, the practice then shift to other things, and then from that time I have, I continue to do, you know, some trauma related, you know, case, but only about five percent to maybe uh, six eight percent, and something like that, and then they here this is the oncology, and this is oncology, and my oncology. Uh, in the earlier days, I still did a little bit of uh, rest, but when Minghui returned, he took over. So from uh, the time when Minghui returned, 2000, that I own, I didn't, you know, do any uh, rest uh, oncology reconstruction. So at this time, I like to say that 95% of my practice is oncology related, and the men they inherited me. And so this is my, my career. And uh, if you look at the data that I uh, correct the time of two, year 2000, you know, when I give the Menina lecture, and 2006, when I give the Banki lecture, you see the number of total hand transfer uh, day uh, to now, to now, the, the number increased up very uh, little, not that many, not that many. So uh, again, I'd like to thank those gentlemen who invite me to share my experience. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Professor Wei, for um, a typically fantastic, amazing lecture on toe transplantation. I think your experience, even if your practice um, at this point is mostly oncologic, there are still many, many, many things that we can still learn. Um, from your uh, incredible experience in 
toe transplants, be it great toe, second toe, combined toes, toe joints, and so on. Uh, before I ask some questions, I wanted to actually open um, the floor up to Dr. Greg Bunke uh, for oh. comments or questions that you might have. Thanks, Bob. Uh, Dr. Wei, I appreciate so much your candor and your honesty about cases. And and I every time I listen to you, I learn something new. But the two things I think that uh, these really important things that I learned from you that we've used more frequently recently was starting from distally and working proximally to look at the vessels. I think that's a key thing because for years we would start proximally and the dorsal dominant system wasn't really uh, adequate frequently. And be, now starting from distally and looking in the web space is, I think that's critical to, to being able to do a successful toe transplant and not feeling like you get lost trying to find the vessels. And the second thing I think that's important is, and it, you talked about it a little bit, but I learned this from you several years ago, was to debulk the volar V of the second toe, especially to, otherwise you get this bulkiness in the, th in, the, in the palm that is very hard to deal with secondarily. But if you do it before you even put the toe on the hand, it's so easy to see the vessels, so easy to see the nerves, and then get a nice flat palm after the toe transplant. That's, those are two very, very small things, but super critical to uh, doing a good toe transplant. Thank you so much again. Hey, Grace, thank you so much. I think, I think the, the great for great dissection is the key technique that helped me to develop, you know, uh, in the recent 20 years, 25 years, this the perforated flap. Because, you know, if you use the same technique, then you can have a control of your physical lens. So thank you so much for pointing out. Great. Uh, we do have a number of questions um, from the audience, and I'll ask a few of them, and some of them might, are my own. Um, so there, there's been basically, there's some changing functional needs now with our patients. And I think in particular, the use of smartphones and electro electronic devices makes the thumb um, important, not only in grip and power, but also in tip pinch. And so there was a question from the audience whether or not in light of the changing functional needs of today, you think there's a greater role potentially for a second toe for the, uh, for the thumb reconstruction in light of the poor aesthetic appearance of it? You know, I think, it, you want me to answer or you want? Oh, no, 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 go ahead. It's a question for you. Oh, okay, okay. Thank you so much, I, I miss it. You know, actually, I, I feel this is a very, very enjoyable and very important field. Unfortunately, there are not many people doing this. I think doing the so-called distal finger amputation reconstruction with distal toe, it's very, very nice, you know, uh, surgery, you know, and, and the rehabilitation, not necessarily that, is that critical? Because the remaining uh, um, lens, including the MP joint, PIB joint, they largely intact. So if you are able to transplant, and at the time of transplant, at the time of dissect, dissection, that you skeletonize all the structures. You cannot leave too much, you know, uh, soft tissue around the pedicle, around the tendon, and that will make your, you know, the suture at the junction. Uh, the, between the transplanted toe and uh, the recipient side, difficult, difficult and ugly. And sometimes it looks like a so-called cobra, cobra appearance. Mm -hmm. So right. it's very, very important to prepare the amputation stuff. And just open, uh, you have, uh, you edit uh, not only the transverse incision, but also the anterior posterior incision to make a four, you know, four pieces of skin that allow you to cope with the appearance. And the, the functional need definitely is, is um, I mean, the patient, many patients, I believe most of the patients like to have this functional recovery, you know, and, and that because they don't know, they don't have enough knowledge, so they don't know how to ask. And uh, right. unfortunately, many people in many centers, they don't provide this kind of service, so they don't know, they don't know. So if you are able to, uh, I mean, 
to make some advertisement, not advertisement, but some <coughs> promotion, then, then I believe that you will see, uh, you know, those patients come to you. I remember last week when Greg gave a talk, and he asked me about a question that how can you convince the people, you know, that they are willing to accept your, you know, uh, total when transfer surgery. My answer is that if you collect enough cases and then show them, every time they come to show them, I think you have a very good chance. Got it. No, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, a couple of te technical questions. Um, if you're doing a, a thumb reconstruction where you're also missing the metacarpal, uh, so let's say a type C or a type D, for example, um, what is your preferred method for reconstructing the metacarpal of the thumb? You, you know, I forgot to mention that actually initial initial treatment, as I say, initial treatment at the emergency, it's important. At that time, it's important. If you feel that the remaining in a couple of bone is not enough, then at that time you have to scrutinize, so called spare part bone, you mm -hmm. know, to implant into into you know where you plan for future reconstruction. And if, Got it. If it's already uh, not done and the patient referred to you, then at this time you have, it's better that you augment the bone and the soft tissue before you do the toe transplantation. Got it. So it's That's a great, great point. Great. And then another question about the, uh, the trimmed gray toe. Um, I think I agree that the, the, the aesthetic appearance is, is certainly much better um, than a, a, a gray toe because it's the size is more analogous to the size of the thumb. Um, have you noticed uh, any increase in stiffness of the IP joint with um, with a trimmed toe? And if so, is there a way to minimize that or prevent it? Yes, actually, in earlier days, I do have, I, I don't think I have more than five, you know, because soon I, I get I get a trick. I know how to deal with that. You know, when the first time you, you design the flap like a, a river run, so when you elevate this uh, skin flap, you do it in the subdermis, in the mm -hmm. subdermis, so that you can keep all the structure that, the, I mean, the uh, joint capture uh, intact. And then when you approach the interpharyngeal joint, you make a second cut, go through the joint and capture, and then you do superior steel dissection, including the, uh, uh, the volar plate. And then after that, then you do, you remove longitudinally about one third of the uh, approximate distal phalanx. And after that, then you retract, you retract this, accept it, of course, as a, um, it's a composition of uh, innermost, the periosteum. Outside is the joint capsule and collateral ligament. Mm -hmm. You retract them and then you trim the excess and make sure that you, when you cross the joint, you, you make it tight. But without this, you, you may have some, you know, uh, a stability. But fortunately, mm -hmm. after at this point, I have to say it's maximum, my case is maybe three, four, maximum. And there's no more, no more instability after training. And that's, a, that's an excellent technical point. Um, and I think it's, it's one of the, the nuances that I think uh, most folks probably don't know about who don't do a lot of uh, trimmed gray toes. Um, we're going to ask one last question and, and then we'll um, uh, end the meeting. Uh, Dr. Dung Chul Lee from Seoul has a question about second toe flaps for thumb reconstruction. Um, he asks um, that when, when he does a second toe transfer for the thumb, the second toe obviously has both a PIP and a DIP joint compared to the original thumb that only has uh, and one IP joint. And in that case, it'll show potentially a boutonniere deformity and a hyperextended MP joint. And so in his case, he does a, a DIP joint fusion, but for the MP joint, it still showed hyperextension. So then he had to go back and fuse the MP joint as well. So Dr. Lee asks if you have a better solution for management of the joints um, when you do a second toe for a thumb reconstruction. Um, you know, because my, because I, I like, I like great talk, just, uh, just like 
what uh, Harry Monkey said, yeah. Rito make a great job. And we just do some uh, minor modification to make it even better than the original great job. And the second tool, I have not that many compared with this for the, for the summary comparison. But you see, the, the length is important. It cannot make it too short. You cannot make it too long. So as I mentioned, that the maximum length should not you know, extend when the thumb AD duck, AD duck to the uh, index finger. The length is not beyond, it's not this top to the IP joint. Yeah, you see? Mm -hmm. But when you use the second door, it's better to have a, a little bit shorter, it's, it's better than a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. And then at this time, of course, if you have a stability of the TIP, you know, that, then you can consider, you know, uh, astrophysics and mm -hmm. and in in my case it's, it's the part the appearance of the part the bulbous part that makes it like a a um a friction you know that kind of deformity you know if you are able you know to correct that then you may you know uh, have, not have this kind of uh, a problem and in my in my opinion it's very important that you always repair the extensor tendon, mm -hmm. you know, and the full extension. And after that, then you do the, you know, uh, flexor tendon repair, following the cascade for the fingers. But for the thumb, you may see your own hand and see how much tension the flexor tendon, you know, uh, should be repaired. Okay. And then in case you, you are concerned about the uh, transfer, transfer, the PIV joint or surface in the pharyngeal joint of the thumb, then you may consider what I have already uh, mentioned that the lump rico muscle to some of the three of the flexor digitonum, some uh, flexor digitonum sublimus from some other mm -hmm. sources that may help you to correct this kind of friction, you know, deformity. This is my suggestion. Great, thank you. Um, it looks like Professor Balakrishnan may have a question. Professor, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Uh, yeah, uh, nice, 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 yeah, nice. Excellent talk. All right. I just like to ask you how will you reduce the pulp of the transferred toe or the uh, thumb? Sometimes, you know, when you transfer these things from children, we see this thickness of the pulp quite some time. Remember, we used to do some resection in the pulp on the Sometimes we advise liposuction. Do you have any modification or any new technique to reduce the pulp or the thickness of the pulp in the transfer toe? It's not very clear, but I guess you're talking about the, the pulp, right? Yeah. The pulp. You know, the central pulp usually is the you know area that need to be treated. But in the past, our conventional hands surgery teaching it's not bad it's better not to make an incision in you know the place where you need to you know like a pinch right and that at that time make concern about possible uh, painful contact but it's not my experience the central part is the part is the part that you need to remove you know if you feel it's too buck too bucky especially from the gray toe and sometimes from the other toes as well. If you are, if other toe is uh, transferred to reconstruct the finger, then you need, you, you can do the same kind of so-called pop plasty. Just go through the center of the pop. Great, thank you for that, uh, that, that technique there. Thank you, thank that. you, Peter. Great. Thank you. Professor Wei, I wanted to thank you again for um, honoring us with your presence and, and teaching us. Uh, we had over 150 attendees from all over the world. And so I think that's a, a testament to uh, your knowledge and the fact that everybody, no matter what time it is, uh, wants to come in and, and, and hear your lecture. So thank you for that. Thank you very much for, for your invitation. I really a, a, a good way to share the knowledge through the webinar at this you know critical time thank you so much i wish you all safe uh stay safe and healthy thank you very much thank you so much stay safe thank you very much for
Bye, everyone. See you.